Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. We're gonna take a look at a question that you asked, which was showing the last button or object that you touched. Let's take a look. So let's imagine that you have a lot of different buttons or faders for a mixer and you're going through, you're touching things, you're working on stuff and you want to know what was the last object that you were working with. Uh, this could be really helpful. So uh, thank you for the question and we're going to use a script to put this together. Now there are other ways to do this, other ways to do the script as well. Uh, so just remember that when working with Touch OSC, uh, there are a lot of different ways to solve this problem or any problem really. So we're just going to look at this one in particular. So the first one we're going to look at is actually showing the name of the object that you touched. So I already have everything set up for me with uh, my iPad connected. So first thing we're gonna do is let's make three buttons. Awesome, and then let's make two faders. So what we're gonna do is when you touch one of these buttons or you touch one of these faders, the label is gonna tell you which one is selected. So we're gonna need a label. Awesome, and let's make this a little bit bigger. Text, great. So all of this is gonna to work together. So we're going to lay a script in our label. And I've put a link in the description of this video to my website where you can download the script or copy it off the site uh, and then use it in your template. So first thing we need to do is change the name of this. So what this is gonna be is last underscore touched underscore VAR for variable. And then inside of this, we're going to paste the script that I have put on the site. And that's that. And then in each one of these, so we'll select this button right here. And actually let's select all of these, right click messages, delete all messages you're gonna to wanna to put in your own uh, MIDI commands, OSC, whatever messages you're using. And then we're gonna put in our script. So the script we're using, which is also on the website, we're gonna go down here and paste that in. And you can see it is searching for last touched fair, which is the name of this label. So we're now gonna to need to enter that script into all of these. So let's just go ahead and try this out. We hit play on our desktop editor. And if we were to select this, you can see button one, button two, button three, fader one, and fader two. So that's super nice. So automatically it will tell you in the label of what is the last object that you used. And you can see this is also happening on the iPad. So it's going to show on your template. So that's super straightforward, very easy with this script, which uh, a big shout out and thanks to Mike Banducci, who's a developer uh, who helped me with this script because it's a little bit above my pay grade. Let's take a look at another way to show the last object, which is using the outline of an object. So in a button, you'd often have these edges. And right now it's showing just corners here. You could have it full or you could have it turned off entirely. So let's take a look at a way to have a lot of different buttons. And then the last one you touch is going to show an outline. So the way we're going to do this one is let's select this button here and we're going to turn this blue and we're going to get rid of these messages because of course I'm not using them and I just want to clear it out. And this is going to be uh, in a big grid. We're going to create that grid here. Um, but first, let's go ahead and make a label. And this label is going to be called touch, or sorry, actually let's call it last touched label. And I'm using underscores in between that. 
And you can also grab that script, which is on my website, and then we'll paste that in here. Now here on our button, we wanna make sure that our outline is turned off. And then we're gonna go ahead and paste in the script for this. And then we are gonna take this button and we're gonna copy it and paste it. Take these, copy paste them, cause we're gonna make a whole bunch of them just to show for this example. So now we have a bunch of different ones. So let's go ahead and try this out on the iPad. If I touch a button, you can see that button eight is showing in the label. And then as I click through, it is showing what is the last touched button. Now, will this work if they're toggles? Let's try it out. So we select them all. And then from momentary, we're gonna go to toggle press. And you can see that one is highlighted. And then that one is highlighted. So you can see if you were to turn multiple on, it still is highlighting around uh, the button or the toggle in this case, which one was the last one pressed? Which one was the last one you turned off? Super helpful. Now you can also see that the label, which is carrying our script is changing. You probably don't need this information showing on your template, or maybe you do. But if you don't, what you can do is select this. And then over here, we're gonna uncheck visible and you can see it changed in the tree as well. So now everything still works, but we don't see the label. So that works just like the other one, very simple. It's actually doing something pretty similar in showing in the label what was the last object selected. Um, but this way it's also adding the outline. So now let's also try it with faders, uh, you know, in like a mixer scenario. So let's move this off to the side and we do wanna keep our invisible label here, but let's just go ahead and add a bunch of faders. So we're gonna take this one, I'm gonna color this pink right now, and I'm going to paste in our script. And then right now you can see it's got corners, but let's turn this to full. And we're going to turn this off because we don't want it automatically highlighted. Let's take this copy, paste that. And let's try the same thing. So here on our iPad, as you can see, I select. And because this fader is part of the group with these blue buttons, you can see that when you move from fader to button, it's choosing which was selected. So if you wanted these to be connected only for the faders, you'd have to add a separate label for that. So here in the editor, let's add another label. And this one we will call last touched fader. Perfect. And now in all of these, we have to change it from label to fader. So now let's add our script to our label. So let's paste that in here. And now when we use our faders, they are reacting and showing on our label and our buttons are working within their grid. And of course you could take this label here and hide it. So you don't have to deal with that and everything works just as planned. So this is a nice, straightforward, simple way to enhance your template. Uh, again, thanks to Mike for his help with this and thank you to you for that question. Uh, so please keep your questions coming. Feel free to put those in the comments below and hopefully you learned something today. You can like this video and subscribe to the channel. There's a lot of fun stuff that's coming up this fall. Uh, I'll tell you about it soon, uh, but thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.